So I want to talk about how AI is shaping the future of product engineering. As models for code generation continue to improve, we may see a shift in the role of software engineers, moving from just coding to playing a larger role in things like product requirements and application design. Now, today what I want to do is show you how to use Cursor AI to build out an app where we're primarily focusing on the requirements. I'm just gonna be providing prompts, not really touching so much of the code myself. Cursor's gonna be doing most of the heavy lifting, but I wanna see just how far we can get and how smooth this experience is in practice. So let's dive right in. Hey folks, so today I'm gonna to show you how to use Cursor, which is an AI powered code editor, to build out a full movies application. The cursor's got some fun features. It's got AI autocomplete. It's got good code generation capabilities. Um, it's got you know a lot that helps you with a chat experience where you can get iterative diffs and stuff like that. And I've just generally found myself being productive using it. So I wanted to just show you something that's a, a little bit non-trivial. So we're inside the cursor editor uh, right now. And uh, I'm starting off with a Next.js boilerplate. Um, you've got the same you know, VS Code features that you'd find anywhere else here. And so we can go inside our project and kick it off. Um, what I have is my bare bones sort of Next.js boilerplate here just to show you um, our starting point. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up um, the cursor chat and uh, we're going to actually start working on some files. I'm gonna ask it, uh, you know, uh, build me a movies app um, using TMDB, uh, the movie data database. I want you to use CSS grid uh, to show the movies um, in a grid, and I'm keep, gonna keep it relatively high level. So as we can see here, it's showing us its work as it's figuring this out and building out um, our logic. I can see that it's been updating the home page. Um, it is including some logic for the API key and fetches to the TMDB API. Um, it's explaining its, its sort of thought process around the specific changes, which is good. Um, and I can do things like uh, even ask it to, you know, centralize my API key configuration into an end file because I want that to be nice and clean. So it's gone and it's done that. And I can populate my API key um, the, the way that I need to. Um, I'll be doing that off screen for obvious reasons. Um, cool. And so uh, we've got that going for us. Let's see uh, what it's actually been able to produce then. So the ideal is we have this API key running um, and I want to, to get that list of movies. So we've run into our first error and it looks like there is perhaps an image error here to do with Next.js um, and I wanted to figure it out. I'm just gonna give it the error itself and see if it can figure things out. It has. Um, there's a domain configuration in my Next.js config for images that I need to update. And so we're just gonna go and make that change uh, to that file, uh, save it, and let's see if that does the trick. Perfect, so we have our popular movies here. We have the first MVP version of our app. Looks nice, uh, well laid out. It used, it, it's using uh, a grid and everything, so that's cool. Um, so we're just gonna uh, commit those changes and uh, we're gonna move on to our next step. Now. Um, it's great to have a big list of movies, but I'd like to be able to favorite the ones that I actually want to watch uh, or the ones that I've watched and I might want to come back to. And so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add a favoriting feature. Um, so I'm gonna ask Cursor, add the ability to favorite a movie and persist my favorites to local storage. Now I could be very vague. I could say like, just let it decide what to do with the storage itself. But um, I wanna use local storage in this case and again, uh, we can see that it's uh, figuring out some UI changes that need to be made. It's using some use effect hook stuff. Um, and uh, we're going to apply this. I really love the diff uh, developer experience that you get here of seeing exactly what changes are being made. So I've hit save. You can now see that we have these hearts uh, that are shown on every movie. And if I click them, we get this little heart icon. And uh, the ideal is that if I reload my page, um, that these persist. Uh, and that, you know, I'm able to come back to them anytime that I want to. Uh, so there's my reload and you can see that the hearts are still there on Beetlejuice and Deadpool and Wolverine, um, etc. Awesome. So very cool uh, to see that working. Now, uh, the next thing that I want to do, I'm going to go uh, back into my editor. I'm just going to, you know, commit this so that I can roll back through these changes anytime that I want. Uh, do that very quickly. 
And um, there are then going to be other changes that I want to make as we keep iterating on this. Uh, and I think the next change that I want is, uh, you know, maybe add the ability to um, add the ability to maybe filter uh, for our favorites. So add a button to only filter movies that have been um, favorited because I don't want to scroll through the list necessarily um, and getting them all displayed in a single place can be nice. So let's see what it does. Um, it's updating our index.js. Uh, we can see that it's still processing. Cool, it's giving us a toggle favorite capability in here. Um, we're just going to go and apply this logic uh, to our file. Um, I love that we get the summary of the description. So we now have this button that says show only favorites. We click it. Awesome, perfect. So this is working just as we would expect. Um, and uh, if I were to refresh it, I'd, I'd also still have the ability to display the full list or show only my favorites. So awesome, great to see that that is working and we can also commit those changes too. Now, um, something else that TMDB allows us to do is actually browse full categories of movies. And um, I also want the ability for this little app to have that. So we're gonna add the ability to um, browse uh, categories, TMDB categories, let's be specific. Um, I don't want it to invent its own kind of category scheme um, and make sure um, that favoriting continues to work as well. Um, I, I, I say this just to make sure that, you know, it doesn't forget that this is important. So here's how we can modify the app. Perfect. So once again, um, it's generating these changes. I can scroll through and get a sense of the logic. There's some UI changes, of course, that are happening too, because it's including the ability to browse categories. Note that I didn't specify the exact UX that I wanted, and so it's gonna come up with something it thinks makes sense here. We're gonna accept these changes, hit save, and go over here. So awesome, we have a dropdown um, for browsing categories. Uh, sometimes I see, you know, these kinds of, um, integrations where it uses a list, but a drop is also fine. And we can see that it's working, working perfectly. First time I can go to, fa I can go to drama, family, fantasy, any of these things. And you'll notice that our favorites feature continues to work here, right? So um, it's displaying uh, which of those posters have still got a heart. And within the category I'm in, I can hit show uh, all movies and it will uh, still show, like it will show my favorites versus um, displaying everything. So that that's very cool. Um, the all categories view is also helpful for going back to the full list whenever I want to, but um, it was able to add this functionality and we can also uh, go ahead and save that too. Now, the next thing that's missing um, from this app uh, is probably the ability to search, right? Like. Not every movie is going to be displayed on this list. I might be interested in something, you know, from the 80s or from the crime genre or something totally different that um, I, I want to look up by a keyword. So we're going to say, add the ability to search for a particular movie, um, require a button to be licked. No, clicked. Don't want to lick any buttons to search. So um, the reason I say this is because I've seen sometimes uh, you ask for a search feature and it'll just do it you know, on key press, which is not uh, optimal. Um, so we're going to be getting all this logic here. I can see that it's already uh, updating with some new UI. Um, I do recommend that, you know, uh, this is sped up uh, and I generally do try to read what changes are being added just so I get a deeper sense of the architecture. So here we can see that there is a search box that's been added to search for a movie. Um, let's type in Batman and click search. Perfect, so it's working. Um, I love all of these movies, by the way. Um, the OG Batman with uh, Keaton is amazing. The Batman is also pretty good. Um, and as we can see, uh, the favoriting continues to work here as well. Uh, there are some small subtle bugs here, right? So uh, there are cases where it's not displaying everything the way that I would want. So there's some logic bug um, and I had to refresh to get everything working correctly. Now for the purposes of this video, I wanna keep things tight. Um, I will say that I spent uh, another five minutes going back and forth uh, with cursor on figuring out what the bug was. And uh, you know, there were cases where it got a little bit confused about the right way to think about the series of logic steps here. Like, what if I uh, search for something and favorite, and then I click on the button, like what, what is the expectation? Maybe I could have been clear with my requirements, but ultimately it was able to help me. And I'm just gonna speed up to show you, you know, what the kind of final version of this ended up looking like. Um, I think it was 
in here and we could show all our favorites and they those continue to work and I could search for a movie like um, Batman and hit search again and uh, yeah this was this is sort of uh, where we needed to, to just the right way that you would want it to but uh, ultimately we were able to get things into a decent place now um, the next thing that uh, I think a movies app like this requires is really uh, the ability to drill down into more information right so uh, we're just showing you titles of a poster. You might want to see things like ratings or cast information or a synopsis or something like that. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create um, a uh, movie details page. So when I click on a uh, movie, um, show me a page that has the movie description, um, cast and other relevant details. Uh, in there. So uh, we're going to go ahead and see what cursor can uh, do with this. Ideally, I'm looking for, you know, like a, a new route um, to be created and uh, for all of my existing functionality to keep working. So uh, it's doing its thing. Um, it's telling me that we're going to be creating a new uh, Next.js page and route uh, for uh, movie slash ID dot JS. So um, We've got that file. There might be a more efficient way of doing this with cursor, but I'm just gonna create it and uh, we're gonna apply these code changes, continue, um, and just have it fill out uh, the code for us. So there's that big, lovely diff uh, and all of the logic. It also needs to update the index, of course. So we're just going to apply those changes and we're going to continue moving forward here. Awesome, all right. So uh, it's going to create a new page for our movie details page. Um, and if we hover over this poster, we can see that, you know, the cursor's changed a little bit. We see we've got, um, you know, the description, we've got the cast information here for all of the actors in it. It's also got the runtime that it's populated. This is all really useful information. And it's very, laid out very cleanly. I, I, I love how this looks. Um, and you know, if we go back to movies, I can click on any of these movies and I'll of course get the right details. It's all you know populated in, like just checking out The Crow and Borderlands. So this is all working very much as I would uh, expect. And so we're going to just go and commit these changes as well. Uh, that's gonna be sort of it for the movie details page. Now there's one last thing that I want to add from a UX perspective. You know, we have this nice light mode and I want to add a dark mode because w why not, right? Um, folks might appreciate that. So we're using Tailwind in this app. Um, hopefully this will be straightforward. So I'm gonna say add a dark mode um, to the app using a toggle. Just give it some very high level information. Um, so it's walking through this, it's saying we're gonna use the React Context API we're gonna be creating a theme context and using a theme provider here as well. We'll have some dark mode logic. Um, so let's just make sure that the relevant uh, bits are in place. Uh, we probably need to set up our contexts. Um, I can never remember if these are supposed to be in the root or in pages. I'm pretty sure they're in root, but I'll move those um, a little bit later. Um, and uh, we're just going to make sure that that gets populated with the theme context correctly uh, and save that. Um, we need to update our uh, app.js to use the theme provider as well. So let's just go and do that. Um, loving, again, the diffs that are shown here helps us understand what changes are being made. Um, and our index also needs updating. Basically, any page that needs a theme change is gonna require a little bit of updating here. Um, so every main file. So we're just gonna go through these and, and sort of get that done. Um, we're probably also gonna need to update our CSS. So here, as, it, as you see, it's saying our global CSS needs some dark mode styles. So just should just take a moment to go and update this. Um, so that'll, that'll give us some styling and global.css, there we go. So just take a moment and sometimes I like to look at these files before I make the changes to get an understanding of like, hey, did everything get applied correctly? So it looks like we have a small bug here. It can't resolve the theme context. I was right, you know, our context needs to be moved uh, into root. So let's just very quickly do that. Um, and move and save and do all of that fun stuff. 
Yeah, let's move this uh, over into the right place and move. Yes, let's do that. Uh, cool, so uh, dev server is refreshing, amazing. And let's see uh, if this all works, should just take a moment. So uh, we're gonna go back into our app. Um, and what we wanna see really is when we toggle, um, the toggle is able to change the theme from light to dark. And uh, we should be able to play around with this. Amazing. So uh, it's working great. Uh, the whole thing gets reskinned using a, a dark mode. I'm really loving the colors it's selected for. The cards looks very clean. And we also want to make sure that other pages work. So here's the movie details page. As you can see, uh, dark mode's also been applied there based on the preference. So that's awesome. Um, loving how this ended up. So that's kind of it for our quick walkthrough using cursor. Um, I really think that I could see myself using this in the future. It's great at cogeneration. I did feel it added some value on top of Claude's sonnet, in particular places where I'd often find that, you know, sometimes sonnet would uh, redo the logic for something like in, in future iterations that I didn't necessarily ask it to. So check out cursor. I hope this video is helpful. Thank you and cheers.